Well, it's a disease we hear about and one we talk about, but how many watching today really know about? I want to let you know more than 8 million American women suffer from endometriosis or what some refer to as those monthly killer cramps. We've all been there, done that, wrote the book, right? It's a condition too often left undiagnosed and untreated. So with us today to discuss this important and timely topic is Dr. Millie Behera, a reproductive endocrinologist and infertility specialist from the Scottsdale, Arizona Fertility Treatment Center, and Dr. Charles Miller, a reproductive endocrinologist and infertility specialist based in Chicago. We also want to let you know coming up later in Up Close and Personal, we'll meet a woman who's not only battled this painful condition, herself, but is also a tireless advocate for advances in a woman's pelvic health worldwide. Doctors, welcome both of you to the show today. Thank you. Great to be here. That was a long intro, and this is a long, sometimes and painful process going through what we as women go through. Dr. Miller, I want to begin with you this morning because a lot of women, and in the interest of full disclosure, that is me today. I am at that point today as we speak. You've got the cramps, right? And you've got right. that irritability and everything that's associated with it. How does woman though know that it could be something more severe, severe enough that treatment is necessary? Well, first of all, I don't have the cramps. However, Lucky I you. certainly do understand, uh, having been dealing with this for 30 years plus, fact is that sometimes it is a normal event. Some women do have cramping just on the basis of their uterus contracting. On the other hand, it can be the tip-off for conditions such as endometriosis. Some of the things you think about, are there other aspects going on, other symptoms? Is a woman having irregular bleeding, heavy bleeding? Uh, it, are there problems with, with bladder function, bowel function? Mm -hmm. Something to tip off that there's something more. One of the things that, that a woman oftentimes will do is use something like Tylenol or Advil, Motrin. If that is ineffective, certainly think about that it could be something more. If a woman is on birth control pills and is still having a lot of discomfort mm -hmm. with her periods, then indeed it is time to start recognizing that something may be more. It may be something on. more serious. Dr. Behera, and I know our audience out there can relate, you know, are most women you think aware of the options that are available to treat this? Because there may be women who think it may be just a normal part of what we go through every month. They may not recognize those symptoms that it is something more. I think you're right. I think a lot of times it doesn't come up until your gynecologist or your healthcare provider is either suspecting it or has diagnosed endometriosis, but at that point, usually there is a discussion about the wide range of treatments available. And typically, you know, as Dr. Miller had mentioned, we try those conservative things first, the medication therapies, trying to aim at the inflammatory portion of, the, of endometriosis, and also birth control pills will help settle the hormonal aspect that, is, that feeds the disease as well. But typically, if those medical therapies don't work, then we are talking about surgical treatments for the disease. You know, it, it just struck me. Let me ask you, is there a direct correlation between this and fertility? There is. So there, there is a connection. Primarily, it's related to how severe the disease is. Um, oftentimes, we know because endometriosis is hormonally active in every month, as the hormones do go up and down, those areas can become inflamed, can bleed, and can scar, and those are all things that can lead to problems with fertility and lead to scarring within, within the pelvis, around the tubes, yeah. and can, oftentimes those women will need help with fertility. Oh, it could be very serious. Dr. Miller, I want to bring you here in on this now. What type of healthcare provider should a woman seek if she does suspect that she has this? Unfortunately, not every physician really understands and can treat endometriosis. So it's very important that a woman does research. Talk with the local hospital. Who do they recommend for endometriosis? Reach out perhaps to the infertility specialist in town. Who do they send their patients to or how involved are they with endometriosis? But it's important for a woman to take pause, and do the research. Love the fact that there are so many resources out there and I want you both to stick around with me for just a bit here because when we return we'll meet a fascinating woman in our up close and personal segment of this discussion who not only talks the talk but girlfriend walks the walk <laughs> as well <laughs> as she delivers to women across the nation frontline messaging on endometriosis. A whole lot more coming up for you after this short break. Stay with us.
welcome back everybody. Joining us now, Heather Guidone, internationally recognized women's health educator with a focus on endometriosis and pelvic pain. A woman who like millions of others out there has suffered with endometriosis. Heather, welcome to the show. Thank you, it's a pleasure. Glad you're here with us this morning. All right, you've been called, and I quote here, one of the loudest voices in endometriosis. Tell us about your personal experience with this disease. Uh, originally, I, you know, I'm much like any other teenager, grew up believing that cramps were normal, bowel symptoms were normal, painful urination was normal. Nobody talks about these things and says they're not normal. So I also grew up that way, but I was, lucky in the sense that I had an earlier diagnosis. Most women will wait an average of 10 years for a diagnosis and see as many as five physicians. I saw one and he operated on me and he diagnosed me and he said ultimately you'll have a hysterectomy. You probably won't be able to have children and I accepted that. At what age? That was at 19. Okay, at 19. At 19. So I, I accepted that that was, that was it. That was my lot in life. But as I began to research the disease and connect with others, I realized there really is more. There are different things you can do. There are better ways to do things. I started to interact with other members of the community. Women are talking. They're just not talking outside of each other. So over the years, over the past 20 years, as I've started to work more and more bridging the gap between doctors and their patients, we're learning that, yes, there is help. We just need to get the education out there. Nobody wants to talk about bowel problems, nobody wants to talk about painful menstruation, nobody wants to tell you that their sex life is ruined because it hurts. We have to have that dialogue, so if I have to be loud about it, I will. What are the main messages or message points that you're communicating to women who are or may be suffering from this disease? Well, at our center, when we talk to the patients, we try to first instill a sense of hope in them. That's the most important thing because this really is an isolating and hopeless disease if you don't know that there's options and if you don't know that there's others like you. So the first thing that I tell our patients when they come to us, don't lose faith, don't lose hope. There are better treatments. There are ways to live well in spite of this disease. And we also, above all else, help women, which is really the critical key point. Absolutely. What would be the takeaway, you would say, in terms of what message would you like to leave women with this morning? We'll begin with you. I think the biggest thing is um, not to be afraid. Find a good doctor, find a doctor who will listen and help you sort out whether what you're feeling is normal or not. And don't be afraid of the treatments out there. They've advanced so much that there are many minimally invasive options. Surgery, uh, you know, there are ways now to have surgery that's less invasive, you recover quickly, but also have good therapy for the endometriosis that you seek treatment for. Take the time to become educated. Knowledge is power, and it is very important when dealing with a condition such as this. Thank you both. Thank all three of you for being here with us this morning. Appreciate your time and, and your great information, really. I think it will help some of our viewers out there this morning. So thank you for stopping by. You. Thanks Thank so much. you so much. Been incredibly informative, as I've said. And if you'd like more information, and if you're one of the millions of women suffering from painful menstrual cramping or know of a close friend or family member who is, you can get more information by visiting the website at omniguidesurgical.com. That's omniguidesurgical.com. And you can always visit us on Facebook at The Balancing Act Fans and, of course, on our website, thebalancingact.com.